Greetings all, it's Blue Knight. Welcome back to the Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. Previously, we helped out the water dragon Pharaon by getting some sacred water to heal her wounds. And as a result, she showed us the location of the first sacred flame, which is right over there. Today, we're going to enter that door and find our first sacred flame. But it's going to be a long, long trek in there, so... Raise yourselves, everyone, because we're in for another dungeon. So without any further delay, let's swim right to the door and head inside. Welcome to the Ancient Cistern. One of the more memorable dungeons in my opinion. Now if you thought I had some trouble back at the, Lin at the Linear Mining Facility, oh boy, you haven't seen anything yet. This is one of the larger dungeons of the game. It really sets the tone for what we're about to go through in terms of the Sacred Flames quests. So, first things first. I actually want to go underwater. Because you can swim into these hands to get this uh, silver ruby. But you don't want to swim slow enough, otherwise the hands will grab you. So, basically, you do a swim spin a second or two before you approach the, uh, approach the silver ruby. I'm gonna do this with the other one. Alright, got it. That's one of the things I usually forget to do, uh, and that kind of leads me a bit stumped when it comes to the Ancient Cistern. So, I'm glad I was able to remember that first, and I moved my hand again, and the and Link just went right to that door. So, the reason why I wanted to get to those hands was to reveal that marker. Those were on both of the knuckles of this uh, statue. So there's left. Go to this one. What direction is that gonna be? Right. But there's other other markings. I think there's one on the back. I'm not too certain where the last one might be. Okay, I know there's one over here. All these uh purple choo choo. So left right down I think there might be one left I'm not too certain like I said before because we're gonna need to remember this combination for a little later on in this dungeon oh there it is it's right below this one I kinda figured it was close to that one but I couldn't remember where for sure didn't want to look up because I thought it'd be too obvious but I guess I was wrong. That that's what I get for a second guess of myself. Kind of a bad habit I have when it comes to video games. <laughs> always go with your gut gut instinct, because nine out of ten times, it's gonna be right. Okay, so it was left, right, up, down. I believe that's the combination. Like I said, we're gonna need to remember that for a little later on. So first things first go through this door so we'll take us to the next room so we jump into these lily pads because it will overturn because of our weight we could do something with these lily pads but we don't have the means necessary to interact with them right now but we will get to it later sorry about that I just got a little interruption but we're back on track now so just, just keep going ahead Deal with more of these Skulltulas. We know that deal with them before. We've dealt with them before, so... Whoa! Okay, I never approached the web and see how the Skulltula reacts. So, I guess that's due for me. Wow, it actually can string shot you. Yeah, I know that. I know that was, that was a thing. But I didn't think it could 
uh, paralyze you with his web like that. Because I usually kill her almost immediately. At first, you might think the Skatoras are a danger because of their size, but not really. Like if you take too long, then they will become more of a threat. Dealt with those guys. This is the reason why you want to remember that combination from earlier. Strike the gemstones pointing in four directions wisely. The way will only open for one who knows the temple's secret order. That's where those markets were before. Well, hopefully I'm right. Left, right, uh, up, down. No, that's not it. Right. That's not it either. Uh, this, this could take some time. Alright, I finally got it! Up, down, left, right. That's the combination. I swear I spent the better part of like 5 minutes swinging my sword at this lock trying to figure out the combo. <laughs> That's one of the only parts of this dungeon I can remember being stumped all the time. Every single playthrough I always have trouble with that lock. But thankfully we're past that, so we can finally move on. A couple of skull tools up there. So we try to approach them on the lily pads. Oh, I thought they would actually go on the lily pads. How about Link? Get up there. That's a good boy. What we're trying to do is to cut down their threads. Because they're gonna fall in the water so they'll die instantly. Or they'll get knocked off like that. That works too. I was going for the thread, but I guess knocking them violently with the hook beetle can work also. So keep that in mind, I guess. But they'll drown, so you don't have to worry about them. Alright, so we'll see if we go up there. That might lead me to some sort of treasure. I'm not too sure. First, we'll get through this wall to low. Come on. Hey, come to think of it, it's low enough so I could probably target it with five. Because we haven't been able to do that to my recollection. Get this. It's a wall tula. Found mostly in ivy and on walls, you can expect this creature to approach when it senses your presence. The beast lives on other creatures' bodily fluids. A fully grown wall tula is several orders of magnitude more da dangerous than a young wall tula. I've already been 21 of these so far. Oh, well, they're pretty small, so they're not going to be that much of a hazard to us. Going up there, that'll actually lead to progress, so let's jump on to this vine wall first to see what this contains. That might be the treasure chest I'm thinking of. Or it could just be an amber relic. <laughs> that works too. That's gonna tip over, so now we can finally proceed ahead. Climb up this wall. And then jump down to that lily pad which is blocking a hole. Right over here. And now we can swim through it. So this dungeon's gonna really test your swimming skills of sorts. Uh, it's more like a extended tutorial of getting some more swimming practice. At least that's how I see it. Uh, wait, was that it? Was I supposed to swim in this hole instead? Oh, it's the river be here too. Nice. Ah, that's where I'm supposed to go. Okay, I got kind of got lost a bit. So, but I think this might be the way forward. Yes, it is. Just swim, spin through these uh, wooden blockades. There's our way out. I think we saw a treasure chest up there if you were paying a bit of attention. It should be right beyond this door. Yes, it is. Open it. See what it contains. It might be some Eldador. Or small key, that works too. I don't know why I was expecting Eleanor. I guess that one time I found it in in the uh, Lanier Desert kind of uh, preceding my expectations. Expectations, I guess. Okay, so let's just go up that water pipe. That's how you get back up here into the door, by the way. There was a Dekubaba there that will surprise you from that patch of grass, but he's not too hard. We dealt with many of those before, so... Don't be worried about that. What am I going up here for? We can't even go past those... Uh, 
those uh, huge gaps over there. Because we need something to swing with. Uh, so I guess now we have to go to this big door and unlock it. Because uh, this this will be a big theme in this temple, this big statue. Because believe it or not, this is going to act like an elevator of sorts that will lead us to the boss door. But obviously we have a lot to go through before we even get to that uh, point. Which is right up there. Master, I have taken the liberty to confirm that a door is located at the uppermost section of the statue. The lock is unfamiliar to me. That means we're going to need to get a boss key at some point to uh, open that door. But we have to get to that first. However, you've come across a new enemy. This isn't your average style, folks. This is a style master. This is an elite captain of the undead soldiers. When provoked, it has the ability to strike with all four of his sword-wielding arms. I recommend inflicting damage with when the slight gap presents itself as it readies its swords to attack. Okay, so this is another mini boss we have to go through. What I really like about the design of the Style Master, I think it has like four different sword designs. Huh? Instead of the same one and just copied over and over again with the self style folks we've seen before. And it also looks more threatening too. The fact that it has two of its arms crossed. I really feel like it doesn't, it's not taking us that seriously. Yeah. But after a few strikes, it will avail its other weaponry, and now the fight gets a bit more difficult. There could be one point that we can go through its defenses now. So just be patient and try to find the spot very quickly, because the more you damage it, the faster it's gonna move its arms. When it makes that square shape it did just a few minutes ago, I mean, just a few moments ago, then that's the opportunity for you to do a stab. So kind of like how this incorporating all of our techniques that gets the Stall Master it really makes it a worthy opponent. So. I'm not sure if you shield bash it will lose some of his weapons though. Ah, it does! Just like a regular style foe, so. But it, it recovered very quickly though, as we just saw. Okay, there's a stab. Keep swigging. Oh, it just lost its helmet. Now it's gonna get even more serious. It's gonna move its arc to go even faster. You see that? Yeah, it's almost impossible to uh, get a get a strike in now. I guess the best thing you should do at this point is try to shield bash its attacks. Now we can lower its defenses completely. Or if the opportunity presents itself, try going for a stab attack. Like so. Oh man. I don't rely on the stab attacks that much though, because something like that will happen. Alright, we took it down with actually a little problem. So, so I'm kind of surprised by that. And that should give us a reward. Because it was a mid-boss, so it's got to give us something. Or not. I guess I was expecting a bit too much. But all in all, stuff just pretty fun to fight in my opinion. I kind of like fighting these, kind of, these kinds of enemies that will really test your skill. Sort of like an even playing field. Oh, there's our reward. Didn't transport into the same room we fought the Style Master in. That's what, that's what I was expecting. And by that, we get the whip. Attached to the end of the whip is a strange glowing sphere of light that can latch onto various things. If you see something you can't reach, target it with Zed and swing the Wiimote to snag it with your whip. Snap! Now, if memory serves me, this is actually one of our B items that we can't upgrade with. Uh, kind of surprising, but once you see it in action, you'll probably understand why the developers chose to do that. Uh, but that reminds me, we got a new item, which means we should check it out some more. This whip has a sticky glowing tip. Use it to latch onto and pull out of reach objects. Okay, so I'll demonstrate uh, very quickly before we end today's episode. So just swing it with your Wiimotes, and then pull back the Wiimote when you want to retract it. 
that way, that way will activate whatever it's attached to. And that's how the whip is used, but that's not going to be the last instance that we'll be seeing the whip in action. Like I said, there are also several other ways we can use it, but those will be demonstrated to us over time. And with that, we're actually going to stop for today. I know we didn't get that far, but I want to get the whip at the very least because this will be very helpful for us. And of course, as a Zelda, as an unwritten Zelda rule goes, if there's a new item we found in a dungeon, that dungeon's gonna be based around the item that we have to use. So, next time on the Ledge of Zelda Skyward Sword, we'll be using this whip to progress even further into the Ancient Cistern. Until we meet again, everyone, farewell for now.